This lesson is on commas. Now, commas are used to join elements of a sentence. And when reading, we insert a short pause for the comma, as I did just then. And there are differences between UK and US rules for comma use. Parts of the sentence that we join can be introductory parts, clauses, or list items. We also separate quoted and unquoted text. Commas are also used as a separator for large numbers. And they separate non-essential clauses from the main sentence. Commas are used in tag questions. And commas separate a direct address from the rest of the sentence. Commas are also used to write dates more clearly. And please note that the spelling is comma, C-O-M-M-A. A coma with one M is something completely different. There are differences between UK and US rules. In the UK, there is no comma before the AND or OR at the end of a list. In the US, there is a comma there. Now, there is a thing called the Oxford comma, which is a specialised version of this, so please see that section for more information. So, for example, in the UK, we would say the fruit bowl contained apples, comma, bananas and pears. In the US, they would write the fruit bowl contained apples, comma, bananas, comma, and pears. And commas are used to join elements of a sentence. And these can be introductory parts, clauses, or a list of items. So if you look at the introductory phrase or word, which sort of acts as like a scene setter. So we can say, trembling with fear, the children opened the cellar door. So this trembling with fear sort of sets the scene for how the children were before they opened the door. Or, one fine afternoon, they set off for a picnic. Again, setting the scene for them going on a picnic. And undeterred, they left work early. Again, explain a little bit what their frame of mind was when they left work. Suddenly, it started to snow. It was fine before. We didn't think it would snow, and suddenly it did. And commas are used to join clauses of a sentence. We had dinner, did the dishes, and went out dancing. Of course, you could, if you wanted to, make three sentences out of this. We had dinner, full stop. We did the dishes, full stop. We went out dancing, but this would be a very strange way of writing it, and it's much more natural to write it as we have here. Next year, I want to take my driving test, start a new job, and get married. So, obviously, ambitious. Today, I washed the dishes, cleaned the house, and got dinner ready. We can join list of items. And the items can be verbs, adverbs, nouns, or adjectives. And we'll look at an example of each. So, for verbs, the acrobat jumped, twisted, turned, and tumbled. And commas between the individual items. Or for adverbs, go there quietly, quickly, and directly. Or for nouns, this recipe requires chicken, rice, peppers, and cream. And lastly, for adjectives, I'll have a pint of delicious, cool, tasty, dark beer. And in each of these, the list item has been separated by commas, and you will have noticed we've used the UK version here without a comma before the and at the end. And commas separate quoted and unquoted text. And please see the lesson on quotation marks for more information. 
My doctor told me I have good news for you. So the narrator is the my doctor told me and the direct quote of the words the doctor said I have good news for you are separated by a comma. Or you can put the quote first. I have good news for you, comma, my doctor told me. And of course you can put the narrator part in the middle and split the quote. I have, comma, my doctor told me, comma, good news for you. All three are perfectly valid and are used all the time. And commas can be used as a separator for large numbers. As can be tricky, as in some languages, a comma is used as a decimal point, and the decimal point is used as a thousand separator. So please be careful if you are a native speaker of one of those languages. Now in English, we use the comma or a space to separate the thousands. So as in 1,234 or 6,378,134. Now you may be thinking, well, that's pretty trivial. Why do we need this? The numbers are quite small. But if we get something like this, it's quite useful to know how to, to split it up into thousands, millions, billions, trillions, etc. I won't speak that number. <laughs> And commas also separate non-restrictive clauses from the main sentence. Now we know it's a non-restrictive clause or a non-essential clause because the information between the commas is additional. And if we were to leave this information out, the sentence would still make sense. So my friend John plays drums in a band. Now if we left out the bit in the middle, it would read my friend plays drums in a band, which is quite good. My brother, who lives in Rome, has two children. And if we left the, the part in the middle out between the commas, it would say, my brother has two children. Now here's the same sentence without the commas. My brother, who lives in Rome, has two children. And in this particular case, I could maybe have more than one brother. And I mean the one who lives in Rome, not the one who lives in Paris. And so in this case, the information is important to the context. And so there are no commas. And commas separate dependent and independent clauses. So if the sentence starts with an independent clause, no comma is needed. As in, since you're all here, comma, we might as well start. If we switch it around, we might as well start since you're all here, there's no comma. When Bob gets here, comma, we will make a move. And if we switch it around, we will make a move when Bob gets here. And commas are also used in tag questions. And they separate the statement part from the tag part. This is a tag question, isn't it? And this is a tag question is the statement part and isn't it is the tag part and they're separated by a comma, as we see. You'll be home on time, won't you? Again, you'll be home on time is a statement. Tag part, won't you? He hasn't booked his holiday yet, has he? In this case, a statement is a negative statement. He hasn't booked his holiday yet. And the tag is the positive component for that, has he? And again, separated by a comma. Dreadful weather today, isn't it? Again. The two separated by a comma. And commas separate a direct address from the rest of the sentence. Paul, get out of bed. Paul is being directly addressed here. So Paul, comma, 
get out of bed. Or if the direct address is in the middle of the sentence, are you, Paul, ever going to get up? How are you feeling today, Susie? Again, Susie's been directly addressed with this question, so we separate it with a comma. But because it's at the end of the sentence, we don't have a second comma. The sentence is finished with a question mark. We don't have how we feel today, comma, Susie, comma, question mark. The second comma is not required. And commas are also used to write dates more clearly. And there are many, many different formats and ways you can write a date, and none is better than the other. So we'll have a look at some examples uh, to show that you, you need a comma to separate numbers that are next to each other or words that are next to each other, but you don't use them for numbers and words next to each other. On March the 14th, 1879, Albert Einstein was born. So we have two commas here. On March the 14th, 1879, so we have two numbers next to each other, namely the 14 and the 1879. They are separated by a comma. The second comma is because the on March the 14th, 1879 acts as an introductory phrase, which is separated by a comma from the rest of the sentence. Or we can write, Albert Einstein was born on March 14th, 1879. And again, we have a comma between the 14 for the day and the year. Or if we write it like this, which is a more typically European format, the party was on Monday, January 7th, 2019. So between Monday and January, but they're both words, we have a comma. Between the 7 and the 2019, they're both numbers, there's a comma, but there isn't one between the January and the 7. Or if we write it this way, the party was on 7th January 2019. We have number, word, number, no commas needed at all.